Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Craig, Hiking Pipes. And it's Friday morning and a uh, little dreary out here. A uh, misty type of day. Uh, start the day off, I'm smoking my Savinelli Autograph. Very nice grain on this guy. Kind of reminds me of a, a whale shape. But I really love the grain going all the way around, and it has kind of a plateau rim in it. Some Sutliff Virginia Perique crumble cake. So last week I spoke about the best flight that I ever had. I think today I'll talk about probably the worst trip I ever had. Well, not probably it was the worst trip I ever had. It had a few undertones to it. Well, major undertones. So, going back to um, about three and a half years ago, uh, four years ago, my mother was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer in September. And we knew what the diagnosis meant. But um, the doctor said if she took uh, chemo, um, she would prolong the inevitable by months. And she decided to do that. My mom was a fighter. So in October, the month after the diagnosis, or about a month and a half later, we used to have my mom over to our house for dinner every weekend. She was still getting around, you know. She was it seemed like she was handling the chemo just fine, and uh, so she came over our house uh, for dinner on a given weekend. Seemed fine, good spirits. The uh, next day, which was a Monday. I had to do a Saudi Arabia trip. So, my flights usually uh, left Dulles at uh, around 10 o'clock at night, 10.30 at night. So, you know, went ahead with my trip. And so, flight took off on time, no problems. About halfway over the Atlantic Ocean, the uh, there was a medical emergency on board with a passenger. They had to break out the oxygen and everything. So somewhere around Greenland, they banged a U-turn because the closest airport to get emergency service is from was back in Canada, northern Canada. So banged this U-turn and flew back to northern Canada and we landed in the middle of the night in some little rinky-dink airport and uh, that was a little that was a little crazy because we were in a very large jet and the airport wasn't really suited to accommodate the larger jets so never have I uh, been on a plane where the brakes were hit so hard and the reverse engines were put on so hard. It was almost like they jutted you uh, forward into the seat in front of you. But the good thing is, is they got the passenger off the plane. And uh, when they use oxygen or any materials on the plane, they have to resupply the plane, make sure it's at 100%. So that took a little bit of time. Subsequently, the uh, takeoff was a little crazy, too, because uh, they had to really gun the engines because the airport was so small. They had to get up to speed as quickly as possible. So we were thrown into the back of our chairs, um, you know, but, you know, no issue. It was just a little crazy. So we got it back underway. Well, because of that delay, I obviously I missed my connector in Frankfurt. This was a, obviously, as I just said, this was not a nonstop flight. And I was flying United Airlines. So, got to Frankfurt, and the airline, and then I tra transferred over to Lufthansa, which is an affiliation of United Airlines. 
but they were really great in Frankfurt. So as soon as we landed, you know, everybody's getting online to readjust their flight itineraries and what have you. And uh, the agents, uh, they had a, a number of agents working the issue and they were calling people out by name and they already had arrangements for them. So again, they handled it wonderfully. So they called me out and I was put on to a different airline other than Lufthansa. I was put on to uh, Etihad, which is a uh, smaller airline operating more, more into the Middle East. So, you know, after a little bit of a delay, you know, layover in Frankfurt, flew to Abu Dhabi. I was supposed to be going into uh, directly into Dammam, which is in Saudi Arabia, but I had to go to Abu Dhabi. Had a layover of about three hours in Abu Dhabi. And then subsequently, I flew into Dammam. So all said and told what it was normally a long 17-hour flight, this one took about 30 hours. I was exhausted. And typically what I would do when I would go over on this trip is after I would land, uh, I usually land around uh, 9 o'clock at night Saudi time, and I would get to the hotel, crash out, of course, and then you know go to the work site the next day. Well, being that I didn't even land until 10 o'clock in the morning the following day, um, I had the uh, car pick me up at the airport and take me right to the uh, work site. So I was going to, you know, with my suitcase in hand, you know, I was going to have one of the co-workers, you know, take me back to the hotel after the day. So got to the work site, worked the remainder of the day, completely bleamed out of my mind. <laughs> and... Uh, Got back to the hotel. It was around 6 o'clock at night, again, Saudi time. And really haven't slept much <laughs> in, in, in well over 30 hours, approaching 40 hours at this point. And we're sitting down at the hotel restaurant. We're having dinner. Get a text from my wife saying, call me immediately. So, sitting at the dinner table, I called her found out that my mom went on to life support and she was not going to come off and I had to come home. So, started scrambling and long story short on this part of it is that I could not contact United Airlines uh, from the hotel in Saudi Arabia. There was no local 1-800 number out of Saudi Arabia. The only thing to do is I would have to go to wait till the next day to go to an office somewhere in the city to find an agent that could do this. Even the concierge at the hotel couldn't help out. So I wasn't going to wait till the next day. So I called my boss who was back in Maryland in his office because it's time differential. It's about eight hours difference. And I told him what was going on, and he was great. He said, I'll help you out. So I'm talking to him on his cell phone. He calls United Airlines. And we're having this kind of quasi three-way conversation with him holding his cell phone up to his office phone while I'm talking. The issue was that when I had gotten rerouted in Frankfurt... United Airlines did not have me in Saudi Arabia. They still had me in Frankfurt because I switched airlines altogether, which wasn't an affiliate of United Airlines or Lufthansa or what have you. So, it, you know, the agent we were talking to at United was, you know, you know, she was she was great. She was understanding that I am in Saudi Arabia and what happened, but she had to go through the iterations and permutations of validating the information I was giving her. I had to give her my flight information from Etihad and all this other stuff. Anyway, 
it took about an hour and a half on the phone to finally get United to update their computer systems, blah, 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 so they can issue me a, uh, a return ticket. And that was for the following night. They only had one flight going out of Damam, and it was like a midnight flight almost. So it was the next night. Um, by the time this was all said and done, I couldn't get to the airport in time for that evening flight, so it had to be the next night. So, worked all day, you know, tried to go to sleep. Um, I was so exhausted, thank goodness. I, you know, I just, you know, my body was so exhausted from the trip um, that I was able to fall asleep despite what was going on in my head. Got up, went to the work site, worked all day. I'm going to relight, excuse me. So as I was saying, worked all day, went back to the hotel, packed up, left the hotel about, you know, had dinner at the hotel, left the hotel about nine o'clock at night, got to the airport, and it was like, you know what, I'm going to fly business class back. After what I just went through and what I'm going through, I... Don't sleep really well on planes, so I'm going to go business class and screw it. So I upgraded to business class, and um, Saudi Arabia is a dry country. So it was a flight from Damam, Saudi Arabia, to Kuwait City, and um, landed in Kuwait, and... You know, people disembarked and got back on, you know, and then we took off from Kuwait. As soon as we were airborne, they were serving drinks. The stewardess came around and I said, I want three scotches. She looked at me and I said, I'm going home to pull the plug on my mom. I need to sleep. And so she was very understanding and brought me three bottles of scotch, which I subsequently poured all into one glass and chugged. Probably in five minutes, I had three bo three of those little mini bottles of scotches down. I crashed. Woke up in Frankfurt. There was a you know four hour layover in Frankfurt, and uh, you know got on the plane from Frankfurt back to Dulles, which is in the Washington D.C. area, by the way. And landed in Dulles, it was um, around 3.30 in the afternoon. And I have to make my way from the Washington, D.C. area up into the Baltimore area. Anybody who knows anything about the Washington, D.C. traffic situation around rush hour, that was a lot of fun. But slogged my way. Got, went right to the hospital, spoke with the doctors, got the whole skinny on what was going on with my mom, saw my mom, and long story short after that one, it was um, three days later um, that I had to disconnect her from life support, uh, allowing other folks who were out of town to you know, come say goodbye and so forth. And uh, so it was three days of, of that, uh, waiting to do that. And then, you know, going through the actions that accompanying watching a parent uh, pass away in front of you. The hospital was great with that. And then you go through the uh, all the formalities of having to um, take care of the funeral. The formalities were a little more difficult because living in Maryland, 
my we have a uh, or my mom has a family plot back on Long Island, New York. We're originally from, and that's where she was going to be buried. And for anybody who's had to transfer a body from one state to another, that's a mess. So much so, and with so much expense, that we ended up uh, cremating my mom. And I took her ashes uh, in the car back to Long Island. So all of this transpired within a week's time. So it just compounded the whole trip. So, um, you know, it was uh, definitely by far that flight over, having to bang the U-turn, getting delayed, getting there, and then finding out what happened and then having to bang a U-turn back. Um, Definitely the worst trip of my life. I don't think there's anything else that could top that. I don't want to think about what else could possibly top that. And hope there will never be something else that will, like that will come about. So, you know, we share these stories, and I hope you bear with, you know, you bear it with me through this whole saga. But it's, hey, you know, these are things that go on with all of us. And, you know, decide to share this with the community uh, so you get to know us a little bit better you know not looking for sympathies or anything like that but just you know these stories are parts of our lives and um, again they're just uh, I thought might be a little interesting um, but more importantly like I said you know you get to learn about us a little bit more myself so with that I'll say thanks for watching, sticking with this whole big story. Stay well, stay safe, and most importantly, please be good to one another. We'll talk to you again real soon. Take care for now. Bye-bye.